Good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry about the late start. Apparently, uh, all my streaming software is unhappy this morning. It does, doesn't like snow. I don't know what the deal is. So we're up and running now and streaming with a late start this morning. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Sorry about the hassle this morning. But uh, let's see here. So, ta-da, we're up, we're running. Brenda, good morning. Sonia, good morning. What's up, Team Freckles? Uh-oh. Lost the glasses. Is it? Is it Monday? It feels like a Monday. I know it's not, but man, nothing wants to work today. Uh, Jill, good morning. Uh, look forward to seeing you at church this weekend. Keenan, what's up? Good morning. Uh, what's up, short stuff? Good morning to you. All right, we're going to be jumping in and doing Nehemiah 10, uh, 30 through 39, which uh, I kind of affectionately call the We Promise section. So this is going to be this area where we're going to cover a whole bunch of things that really the uh, God's people are making these pledges to recommit and re-promise uh, to um obey and follow the law. And so, um, and some of them are really difficult to understand. Some of them are really complicated. And I just want to give you a heads up right out of the gate before we jump into the text. Uh, I threw some posts up in the Jesus Time uh, Facebook page for a couple of rabbit trails to chase this morning uh, when you get time. One about uh, mixed marriages as that's referenced in the text this morning, I want to give you some background and backdrop for that so that you understand what they're talking about. It's, uh, it's not talking about mixed marriages the way that is um, brought up in our culture in a modern world about interracial marriages. That's not the issue at hand whatsoever. Um, and so I put some stuff in the Facebook group uh, or Facebook page for you to unpack that a little bit. The other thing that's mentioned in here is a part where they promise to give their firstborn sons. Um, and it's the way it comes up in the passage, it's mixed in with a part about firstborn animals as well. And it it's easy to misunderstand that it's like a child sacrifice or something. And so I put a great article in there um, as well that helps you understand this is uh, a really complicated, um, not straightforward, easy to understand concept that they're referencing from the Mosaic Law in Exodus. And it's been debated for a long, long, long time um, as far as the exact interpretation of the words and what was meant. And, uh, and so I just wanted to give you some background on that. I didn't want you to get hung up um, thinking that, uh, that here we see in Nehemiah there, devoting themselves to sacrifice their firstborn son. That's not, that's not what's going on. And there's lots of uh, fun research to dive in and learn about why it's such a um, contested or not really contested, but why it's such a difficult to understand passage. Um, there's just not a lot to work with from the text. So um, those are a couple of things I just didn't want you to get hang up, uh, hung up on. So let's pray and let's jump into Nehemiah 10, 30 through 39. All right, let's pray. Man, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the text. Um, and I just thank you for, um, again, getting to look back and see where your people recommit themselves um, to the things that are important. And we get some insight, um, Lord, to see um, when you led uh, people like Ezra and Nehemiah and Zerubbabel to, to lead the charge, to rally your people, these are the things you call them back to. These are the things that you're saying, hey, if you're going to make some promises, this is what matters. And I think we can learn from those promises. And so, Lord, help, help us learn. Teach us this morning. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, here we go. We're jumping in to Nehemiah 10, verse 30. We promise not to let our daughters marry the pagan people of the land and not to let our sons marry their daughters. We also promise that if the people of the land should bring any merchandise or grain to be sold on the Sabbath or any other holy day, we will refuse to buy it. 
Every seventh year, we'll let our land rest, and we will cancel all the debts owed to us. In addition, we promise to obey the command to pay the annual uh, temple tax of one-eighth of an ounce of silver for the care of the temple of our God. This will provide for the bread of the presence, for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings of, on the Sabbaths, the new moon celebration, the annual festivals, for the holy offerings and for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel. It will provide for everything necessary for the work of the temple of our God. We have cast sacred lots to determine when, at regular times each year, the families of the priests, Levites, and the common people should bring wood to God's temple to be burned on the altar of the Lord our God, as is written in the law. We promise to bring the first part of every harvest to the Lord's temple year after year, whether it be a crop from the soil or fruit from our trees. We agree to give God our oldest sons and the firstborn of all our herds and flocks, as prescribed in the law. We will present them to the priests who minister in the temple of our God. We will store the produce in the storerooms of the temple of our God. We will bring the best of our flour and other grain offerings, the best of our fruit and the best of our new wine and olive oil. And we promise to bring the Levites a tenth of everything our land produces, for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all our rural towns. A priest a descendant of Aaron will be with the Levites as they receive these tithes, and a tenth of all that is collected as tithes will be delivered by the Levites to the temple of our God and placed in the storerooms. The people and the Levites must bring these offerings of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the storerooms and place them in the sacred containers near the ministering priests, the gatekeepers, and the singers. And we promise together not to neglect the temple of our God. So they're making some pretty big commitments here. Um, they're making some promises and pledges to go back to their roots to uphold the law. Um, and so as we're looking at this thing, there's a couple of things that um, stand out to me. One, having been to Israel, I like the part in here about um, uh, that they cast lots to determine who's going to bring firewood when. Uh, I grew up in North Idaho and grew up cutting firewood and uh, having a house that was heated with wood uh, often and just knowing how much work it is to go out and collect all the wood, buck it all up, load it, get it you know, stacked, all that stuff, keep your fire burning. Well, the, the um, altar where they burnt uh, sacrifices would burn 365. They, they would always be burning. And in a land where it is barren, there is rock everywhere and scrub brush, and it's, it's um, not plentiful trees to get firewood duty would have been a pretty big deal. Like I, I, you would have had to work pretty hard to get cords of firewood in Israel, especially near Jerusalem. And so I know some of you have been there before as well, and you can just sort of imagine how much firewood it would take to keep a fire burning uh, open air, not in a like a, a good wood burner, but like just an open fire like a campfire to keep that burning 365, 24 seven, which uh, so that's just kind of interesting to me to learn about. But the thing I like about this passage is these things that they, they are promising to, and it so much of it revolves around the way they're gonna live among the people that they're with. Like, so we've got these exiles that have returned, they've reestablished, the temple is uh, finally rebuilt, um, the walls are rebuilt around the city, they've got some protection and they're thinking about like, okay, now what? Now we're able to worship again. We've got some safety and some security kind of coming back. Now, what do we do? And the what we do is it's time to make sure that we don't lose track of what we've accomplished. It's time to make sure that we stay faithful and committed to uh, the temple, which for us as Christians um, is our, our, our local assembly, our church. Um, there's more to it than that, but in a nutshell, um, and so they're making these pledges, like we're going to be faithful to the church. We're going to be faithful to the leaders of the church. We're going to be making sure that um, they have what they need to do the ministry that the church does, to, to celebrate the different festivals, to make the different sacrifices, to lead our people well. Um, and, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to pledge to give um, the first fruits of their crops, of their uh, produce, of their... Um, cattle and sheep and all that kind of stuff. And so um, 
you know, one of the things I was thinking about this morning as I was going through this, and I, I started sort of doing this on my own this morning, is just calling this the We Promise section and just sharing some of my own little notes from my nugget notebook here. I just said, you know, what if we updated this passage and kind of had a modern twist, personalizing it and updating the promises? So, you know, what if we put them in our own words, you know, like, uh, uh, I promise to raise, you know, my kids to know and um, understand who Jesus is and, and do my best to help them know and love Jesus and the value and significance of not marrying somebody that doesn't sync up with their faith. Um, I promise to honor the Sabbath and plan ahead to take a break through the week. Um, you know, not just do business as usual seven days a week. Um, you know, and then it goes on to talking about like letting your land rest and your crops rotate. I'm not a farmer, so that's not a real applicable one to me, but even the idea of could you live your life in a way that you made uh, provisions and budgeted so that if anybody owed you any money, if anybody owed me any money every seven years, I could genuinely just say, hey, this is the year where I um, forgive anybody that owes me uh, a debt, you know? Um, and am I financially prepared in a position where I could relieve that debt and give it away because I've planned and I know that, hey, every seven years I just forego anything anybody owes me. Um, so anyways, just to go through and think about like what would it look like for you to promise those promises and put them in a modern twist in your own language, um, you know, in kind of an updated way. So just some food for thought this morning. Again, I put some nuggets in the Jesus Time Facebook page uh, about the mixed marriages stuff and about the uh, offering your sons to the priests. Um, and so I put some details in there, so feel free to chase those down. So let me say hey to some more peeps before we get off of here. What's up? Good morning, Karen and uh, Ken. Hope you guys are doing w <laughs> doing good. I'm reading your comments as I'm going here. wonder how many Jesus Time shirts you have. I have lost track um, a lot. Uh, it, I didn't know when I started this that I was going to have a five hundred or thousand dollar investment in shirts, but apparently that uh, it's happened along the way. Uh, Miss Wendy, what's up, Mama Mosa in Thunder Bay? Good morning, Faith. Good morning, Tammy and Bruce. Good morning. I was thinking of you guys, Tammy and Bruce, this morning uh, because you've been to Israel and because you understand having to go out and how much work it takes to get firewood. And so I thought, as I was thinking about this, I thought you guys would appreciate how difficult. Uh, it would be to acquire that much firewood to keep the uh, altar burning 24 seven. Morning, Ann, Robin, good morning. Lori, good morning. Faith, good morning. Miss Linda, good morning to you. Carol, what's up? Good morning. Um, short stuff is on here and there's a bunch of other people and comments that I'm doing on my phone so it's hard to see all the comments. So anyways, Ron and Toby, good morning. Debbie, good morning. All right. Let me pray for us and get us off and running. I know I got a late start this morning, so I want to get you guys uh, off and on your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Lord willing, with uh, less technical difficulty. Let's pray. Ah, man, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thanks for these promises and reminders of um, what it looks like to make some pretty serious commitments to put you first, to care about um, your church and um, what it takes to um, run the kind of church and organization that can serve people in the community and help people when they're in need and support staff and people that um, can do ministry and lead others to know you and equip others to, to be disciple makers and all that it takes to pull that off. And so, Lord, I just pray that um, you continue to um, rekindle these same types of promises in the hearts of people um, here and all around the world, Lord, to um, pledge and commit and resolve to support their local churches so that the ministry of the gospel can continue to go forth. So I just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You guys have a fabulous day, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.